welcome you, mighty God. We welcome you, Holy Hallelujah. Spirit, to dwell among us this evening, to demonacle with us this evening. And as we worship you this evening, God, we ask that your presence will fill among us this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I look into your holy name, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround me become shadow in the light of you. Oh, and when I found the joy of reaching your heart, And thrown in your love When all things that surround me Become shadow in the light of you I worship you, Lord I worship you become shadow in the light of you. We worship you this evening, mighty God. We have no one else to worship you this evening. We worship you when all things that surround us, when all things look dull, look jerry, look weak, look glad. I worship you. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Awesome wonder. When I look into your loveliness, when I look into your holiness, oh Lord, when, I, when all things that surround me, when I think you don't remember me, I still worship the king. Hallelujah. I still worship the king of glory this year. What an awesome God we serve. 
Mighty God we serve. What a God, what a God, what a God. And when we look back over our lives and see where God has brought, I don't know about anybody. When I take a survey of my life and see where God has brought me from, he has been good to us. And we have all right to praise him and to adore him and to lift up his holy name. Hallelujah. When I get there, when I get there, I will sing and shout. When I get there, hallelujah, praise the Lord. When I get there, oh, when I get there. what has been going on we are just here temporarily we are just occupying until our father is ready for us so only thing we can do is sing we know it was his blood that saved us we know that he's the one who is keeping us we know who our father and our savior is ah, hallelujah hallelujah let us give our father our daddy a warm round of wave offering from left to right. Let us praise our God because we know that he is the one who has been keeping us. And without our father, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to roll around and cry? No, we will not be like the ones without hope because we know that our father is the one who is keeping us. We are privileged to be here. We were privileged to get up this morning and last a whole day. We were privileged to go through a work day and we were privileged to come here because God knows what was awaiting us this morning, what awaited us through the day, but he covered us. He protected us and we have to be grateful for that. So let's give our all to the Lord. And remember, we are not just going through life. 
we are actually fighting the battle every day. So we have to remember to keep that prayer in our hearts every single moment of every day. My name is Patricia Roden, and I'll be your moderator for this portion of the service. At this time, I will call on our praise and worship team again, and they will come with the opening song, Hymn 6, I Want to Know More About Jesus. While traveling through this world of sorrow, I'm on my way to glory land. I won't turn back for some tomorrow. My trials here, I understand. I want to know Jesus, I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that homeland is gonna receive as my reward. I want to know more about that homeland. I mean to go there someday somehow and after I reach that heavenly city I mean to know more than I know now I'm glad I know the blessed Savior for through his blood he sets me free, though rough the road, I shall not waver, for some glad day, he says I see, I want to know more about my Jesus, I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to receive as my I want to know more about that homeland. I mean to go there someday, somehow. And after I reach that heavenly city, I mean to know more than I know now. He promised that his soul ascended. I'm coming back, the Lord is safe. If on his promise you're dependent On wings of love I fly away I want to know more about my Jesus I want to know more about my Lord I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to receive as my reward. I want to know more about that homeland. I mean to go there someday, somehow. And after I reach that heavenly city, I mean to know more than I know now. Praise 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to know more. No matter how much we think we know, there is something we don't. So we have to always rely on our Savior and try to get closer and know him a little bit more. At this time, I will call on Sister Jacet Bennett to do the opening prayer, followed by Sister Karen Morris with our scripture coming from Psalms 5. Thank you, Mother Rita. Good evening, everyone. Please stand everywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand in reverence before the Lord in prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you this evening. All the praise, the glory, and the honor, it belongeth unto you, Jehovah God. And as we come this evening, we just want to know more about your goodness and your faithfulness. Oh, hallelujah. So we just want to thank you, mighty God, that we have experienced salvation through your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mighty God, as we come this evening, our ladies' ministry, oh God, we invite your presence because we want to know that before we leave here, we will say it was good to be here. So each and every person, Lord God, that are here this evening, even those who may be watching us, we ask, mighty God, that your presence will felt among us and that we will learn more about you. Father, you know this evening is a special evening. Mighty God, when we come to learn more about uh, health, Oh God, it's all about a health workshop with your daughter, Dr. Small. Father, as we come to learn more about our bodies, our life, oh God, it's all about stress or anxiety and tension and you name it. She will have so many things to express to us as a people, as a church, because we know that, oh God Almighty, knowledge is power. And we need more of this as we go forward in kingdom building and even to building up each other in our holy faith, Lord. Oh God, we ask, Lord Jesus, that as we sit and listen or we would participate, we pray, mighty God, that we will learn more of what we have to deal with on a daily basis as people of God and also to share to others who will meet or even those in our family settings. Father, have your way in our ladies' ministry tonight. We leave ourselves into your hands. We thank you for Bishop. We thank you for Sister Ruth. And we thank you for the president. And all of us, Lord God, we just ask that we will experience you in a mighty way as we learn more about ourselves and the things around us in society. Have your way, we pray in Jesus' name. Good evening again to everyone. And the night's lesson is taken from Psalms 5, reading from verse 1 to the end. I'll read while you follow in your Bible. And it begins, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou atest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. 
Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God, and let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Twelve and last. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. Here's to the ending of a portion of God's holy words. We do honor it by saying, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, I call on Sister Marcia Miller to do the acknowledgments and welcome. And before she comes, I'm hoping that everyone is ready with your pen and paper, ready to get all the information because it's going to be well needed. Sister Marcia, good evening, everyone. It is my noble task to welcome all of you present here this eve this afternoon. Special welcome is extended to our Bishop Royal Robinson and the family. I also want to especially welcome our invited guest, Dr. Donald Small. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy what, you, what she has to offer this afternoon. Once again, welcome to all. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. I want to thank all our participants thus far, Sister Bennett, Sister Morris, and Sister Miller with their part in this section of the program. I want to thank our wonderful congregation for your attentiveness. And we are now going to hand over the rest of the program to the second vice president, Sister Lynette Rudin. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Everybody, we are here to have a wonderful time. Some people don't smile from you coming here, you know. So let us stand and sing. Smile. Come, come on, man, jump up. Smile a while and give your face a rest. Raise your hand to the one you love the best. Then shake hands with those nearby and breathe. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are not here for, we are just here to have a happy time. So just let us relax and enjoy the evening. This is such a fitting song. I must commend those who, the person who chose this song. While traveling through this world of sorrow, I'm on my way to glory land. I'll not turn back for some tomorrow. My trials here, I'll understand. We all know it's a rough time, but we are moving on. And how are we moving on? In the Lord, we have him as our guide. This evening we have 
Bishop has stepped out. We welcome him. He's always coming back. And we have Sister Ruth with us, our mama, our first lady, whether she like it or not, will give her a big hand. And that is back in the house, Bishop Robinson. Yes. So uh, we are here for workshop, but we don't want to take up a lot of time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask Bishop Robinson to just greet the ladies. I will greet all of us then. And then Sister Ruth will come and greet us also. So Daddy first, then Mommy. Good evening, ladies. It's a joy of mine to be here. Thank you very much, Lady Roden. Amen. Um, to our guest speaker, Dr. Small, and uh, the leadership of the ladies ministry, Sister Rob, the, and just about everyone, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Greetings, church. Amen. I am reduced to just a chauffeur today, but thank you for reminding me uh, that I am daddy of the house. Thank you. <laughs> but Sister Ra reduced me to a chauffeur. <laughs> uh, it's good to be here. Um, I just want to greet you in the name of Jesus. And I, I just want to make this point. Um, it is said that the church is a female army with male generals. And this evening, it, it wants to prove that way. And I say that against the background. The level of maturity, the level of support, the level of cooperation from the ladies, especially at Tree Water Lane, it is phenomenal. Wake up the ladies in the, the way hours of the night and give them a problem. They are going to fix it. And can you help me cheer yourself again? They're going to fix it. And so I, as, as your pastor, I am excited. I am feeling proud of you um, this evening. And I am not feeling too bad because I always drop in sometimes and pay my offering and then slip away. So it's good to be here. God bless you. Enjoy the night. Amen. God bless you. Good evening, good evening ladies and the gentlemen. So we have some men at the back, so we have company ladies. You know, we, they're always, you know, a part of us. But it's really a pleasure this evening to be in women's ministries meeting. And the beauty about it is that we are combined this evening with the young ladies ministry and the ladies ministry. And we are out for a wonderful time. Let me greet our presidents, both from the young ladies ministry, Sister Atkinson and her team, Sister um, Pontarol is not around, but Sister Roden, is driving the, the force and um, so far we are going places. Let me greet also our secretary and every single lady who have made it possible to be here this evening. I want to also greet our guest, um, Dr. Small, who I just, she came in and for a long time, I wanted her to do something for me, but she, was, she has been so far away. 
And so I got her in my little web this time around. She came in just to visit and to see her uncle. And I said, look, we cannot afford her to come this far and so close and don't get something from her. And thanks be to God, she made herself available to share with us this evening. And I'm sure we are out for a wonderful evening. Let me greet also Sister Campbell from uh, retirement. Sister Campbell is in the house. And put your hands together for Sister Campbell. Anybody else from, from any other church on the district? Yes, I really wanted everybody to be here, but you know, it was a very short notice. And so the next time around, we'll carry everybody in and let us all eat from the Lord's table. God richly bless your hearts this evening as you continue to worship the name of Jesus. Yes, we are out for a wonderful evening. As Sister Rhoda said earlier, you need to take out your papers and your pen or your pencils, whatever you have, because we have some work to do. God bless you richly. Thank you. Thanks to Bishop, thanks to Sister Ruth for greeting us. And I did not thank Sister Patricia. She did a good job, give her a chair. And guess what? Guess what? We are having a workshop. But the class, all over the place. So we're asking everybody to come up a little closer. Those at the back, come up, let it look presentable. We want to have a nice class. Come up, come up. And the presenter will be coming soon. Some people don't move yet. Come on, we can't be disobedient in the house of God. Let us come up a little closer. I'm still waiting. We are all one ladies, so let us come together. Sit beside somebody. You don't know what will happen tonight. All right. While you are doing that, tell your neighbor something nice. And we are going to ask our immediate president, past president, to come and introduce our guest speaker. I don't see any, some people talking. Sister Thomas, please come. Thank you, Sister Roden. I greet our bishop and the First Lady Robinson and Oriel, the executive of both ministries headed by the presidents and I greet all our ladies here this evening in the name of our Lord. And there's a special guest who just walked in. I want to greet Sister Nolda Lawson, who is visiting with us this evening. Welcome, Sister Nolda. God bless you. It's nice having you. I'm here this evening to introduce our guest speaker. Or speaker this evening or presenter is a motivational speaker, consultant, and certified professional in healthcare quality who works with individuals and church organizations to amplify their communication, connection, and confidence so that they can effectively share the love of Jesus Christ to the world. She brings a unique perspective gained from her experience as a healthcare administrator, and she mentors and guides others to effectively strengthen and elevate their leadership vision to new heights using biblical principles. As an ordained minister in the New Testament Church of God, our presenter has a passion 
for encouraging and empowering teens and women to reach the full potential of their personal, professional, and spiritual lives. Her goal is to equip, engage, and inspire women of all ages to walk in the victory that only Christ can give. She has devoted her life to loving God and sharing his awesome love to others. When not speaking or training, our presenter can be found spending time with friends, family, and her beloved daughter, Brianna. My sisters, and I let you know we have a very large YouTube following this evening in our women's ministry. At this time, I'll invite those in the house to stand, and those on YouTube, just be attentive and help me welcome our presenter, Dr. Donna Small. Praise the Lord. Let's praise him again. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. You may be seated. A pleasant good night to everyone. It is a pleasure to be with you here tonight. First of all, I would like to give honor to the Father, to the Son, and to the blessed Holy Spirit because without whom none of us would be here tonight. None of us would be here tonight. I'd also like to thank, take the opportunity to honor your bishop, Royal Robinson, your first lady, Sister Ruth Robinson, and their beautiful daughter, my beloved, Sister Oriole Robinson. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> to the officers of the church, and to the church, especially the ladies of the church uh, that are represented here this evening, I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Also, I would like to make sure that I greet our online viewers tonight as well, because they are important too. And I know there are a lot of online viewers, but the, there's one set that's in the lot of the online viewers tonight that I would like to give a special shout out to, and that is my uncle, Mr. Ralph Small, and his wife, Sister Beryl Small, they're watching, so I just want to say, Auntie B, Uncle Ralph, God bless you. So I'm so happy to be here with you tonight. And I want to thank you for the warm welcome. And any good teacher has to have a good assistant. So Sister Roden, where are you? Where did she? Oh, there she is. I want to tell her thank you for bringing everybody up and breaking the ice with us tonight because that's what we needed very much. Thank you so much. And this is my first time visiting the Montego Bay New Testament Church of God. I've heard about it all my life. Um, but I've never been here, been here until this trip. And I'm so pleased to see all the big things that this church is doing, not only here inside, but outside of the community. So I'm very happy to see that. So again, I'm Donna Small, and I'm coming to you from Fresno, California. It took me three planes to get here. And my primary focus, as Sister Rob said, was to visit her father, my uncle, and make sure that he was okay. He has not been well. He's 97 years old. But I'm happy to report that God has been good to him. Amen? Amen. So I am a registered nurse by trade. I'm also a clinical nurse specialist. I work in administration. But I grew up in the New Testament Church of God. I'm a pastor's child. So having walked those two areas my whole entire life, recently God has really placed in my heart to bring them together. And especially for women, God has placed women on my heart 
because there's a need in the church that we are not talking about women and we need to talk about those things. And I'm going to talk about that tonight. And even if one person is changed today, even if one person is blessed tonight, then mission accomplished, amen? So if you have been in church any amount of time, some of the things that we are going to discuss or that I'm going to discuss tonight, you may not have heard before. And it's not because they're bad things or because they're contrary to the word of God, but it's just things that we don't discuss. But as our sister said, knowledge is power and we need to take on knowledge. Proverbs 1.5 says, a wise man will hear and increase in knowledge. So tonight, we are going to increase our knowledge and our understanding on the topic of mental health. Tonight is a teaching session, and I've prepared a handout for all of you. Does everybody have a handout and a pen? Amen. If you don't, I know there's some ladies going around. So feel free to take notes, and at the end, we're going to have a time of question and answer. And so we are going to be talking about mental health today, and we're going to talk about a biblical approach to dealing with stress, tension, and anxiety. Amen? Before we begin, let's just pray, because even though it's a teaching session, we still want to invite the Holy Spirit to come and dwell among us. Let us pray. Our Father and our eternal God, God, I thank you. I thank you for being here tonight. I thank you for bringing each and every woman out tonight. I thank you for each and every woman and every person that is online right now listening tonight. Holy Spirit, I invite you to sweep over this room, Lord Jesus. Sweep over the rooms of the people, wherever they are online. Touch each heart, touch each mind that we can hear your word for your people. And now, Father, I stand here as a humble servant prepared to give your word. I ask you that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. Oh, God, my strength, my rock, and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So before we start to talk about mental health, there's a few things that I want to tell you. Number one... I want us to all understand that we all are created for a purpose. You are not an accident. You are not here by chance. If you have breath in your lungs, you still have something that God is calling you to do. It doesn't matter what your family background is. It doesn't matter what's in the bank. It doesn't matter what's going on at home. It doesn't matter what your church pedigree is. You are made to glorify the Lord, and you are not an accident. What Jesus is calling us to do is to win souls for him. But there are some things that we need to learn on this journey that we call life as we go about doing the work of the kingdom things that we need to learn about ourselves. The Bible tells us in Psalm 139:14 that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and my soul knows it very well. So you see, there's no accident, no chance. God's creation of you was purposeful, and he, his creation of you and his creation of me is marvelous right down to our very souls. So never think that you are nothing or that you are a nobody. You are a big, big somebody in the eyes of the Lord. God has made us as beings that are made up of body, mind, and spirit. So when we come to Jesus, we take care of the spiritual part, right? We come to church, we hear the word of God, we, we often are doing very well, ladies in the church, with spiritual things. But the part that we leave out many times are our body 
and our mind. And that's where the enemy likes to attack. So while we are here on earth, and while we are here, we have to pay attention to this robe of flesh that we have, that the Lord has given us. And we need to realize that what we think affects our body, and it affects our mind, and it can even affect our spirit. So these are some of the things that I'm going to be talking about tonight. I have about four main objectives. We're going to talk about how anxiety and depression affects our mental health. I will also talk about how physical issues can contribute to the stress and tension that we feel that affect our mental health. I'll talk about practical ways to manage stress and tension and anxiety. Most importantly, I'm going to talk to you tonight about what Jesus says about the stress and tension that we face in life. Does that sound like a plan? Amen, okay. So before we talk about anxiety and depression and how it affects our mental health, we need to define it. We need to know what we're talking about. So what is anxiety? It's a word that we often use. I feel anxious about something. I have a little anxiety about this, but what is it really? Anxiety is this. It's a feeling of worry, extreme nervousness or unease about something that hasn't happened yet or something that you feel in an unfamiliar situation. Feelings of worry, extreme nervousness, or unease. Depression is different. Anxiety gives rise to depression. Depression is defined as a low mood, sadness, loss of pleasure, emptiness, or interest in activities for a long period of time. So this is not just a mild change in mood where you might feel a little down today or whatever. This is something that happens over and over, over time. So before I get into this session, I'm going to ask some questions today. And I do not want you to raise your hands yet. I'll tell you when. But I want to ask you some questions. And I want you to be honest with yourself, be honest before God, and not worry about the people around you. Just listen to the questions. Have you ever felt anxious for no reason at all? So remember, worry, unease, nervousness, typically about an event. Have you ever felt anxious within you and you just don't know why? Have you ever felt a sense of panic in a situation that did not call for it? Now, if somebody brought a snake up here, I would panic because I'm afraid of snakes. But I'm not talking about that type of panic. I'm talking about a panic that you might feel like you just don't know why. Have you ever felt that? Heart racing, shortness of breath, some people even uncontrollable crying. Have you ever had headaches or nausea or even vomiting that comes on in times of intense stress? Stress headaches. Have you ever had a stress headache? Have you ever felt down without motivation, feeling low energy, and not able to explain why? I'm going to be the first to raise my hand, so you don't have to feel bad if you raise yours, okay? If you answered yes to at least one of this quest these questions, I'd like for you to raise your hand. Be honest. Oh, some have two hands up. Okay, now keep your hands up, and I want you to look around the room. All right, you can, you can put your hands down. Here is the thing, ladies. You are not 
alone. Amen? You are not alone. You saw all the hands that were raised. Some had two. You are not alone. Every one of us has experienced one or more of these items at some time in our life. Let me share some statistics surrounding anxiety and depression for you. Women are two times more likely to be diagnosed with anxiety than men. More than half of people diagnosed with anxiety also suffer with depression. In a study in 2023, 44% of students aged 12 to 17 report symptoms of depression. And 15% of those students aged 12 to 17 have considered taking their own life. That is supposed to wake up the church. We are supposed to pay attention to that because some of our young people are suffering and you don't know because they're not talking. In a poll of Christian women, when asked about stress and anxiety, this is what Christian women in the church have reported. They are tired. They lack energy. They feel overwhelmed. They feel inadequate. They pray, but sometimes they don't even know how to pray. Have you ever felt so overwhelmed by the cares of life that sometimes it's hard to pray? And these are things that are very difficult for us to talk about in church because we have to have a strong faith, and we do. Our hope is in Jesus. But sometimes we have to admit we fall short. These things cause guilt in the church, these things cause shame in the church, and these things cause isolation because you don't want to go talk to somebody else because you're too embarrassed. Amen? Okay. Christian women are reporting behind the scenes that they feel defeated sometimes. They feel that people are saying, well, just pray it away. But here's the thing. When they come to the church, they sometimes want to come down to the altar, but they don't. These are what women are reporting. It's not what I'm saying. These are, this is research. Women say they don't want to come down to the altar. Why? Because somebody's going to say, mm-hmm, what did they do? What's going on in their life? Right? <laughs> You don't, so you feel embarrassed. But the altar is not just for the sinners, women of God. It's for us too. And anytime you need a breakthrough for anything, you better find yourself down here and put it before God before you leave. And do not walk out of these doors the same way that you came in. Women are walking with anxiety and depression and they are not dealing with it because of hurts that they have had in the church. Somebody said something to them and hurt them. They don't want to go to the altar because that same somebody might see them and talk about them. Church hurt. Women of God, we need to love one another. Don't come into church and kill anybody. Love one another because you never know what people are going through when they come to church. Love one another. Even if their skirt is a little short, even if they didn't wear a hat one Sunday, love one another. God will take care of the rest. Your job is to love. Amen? So the number one contributing factor to anxiety and depression and panic attacks, feeling of impending doom, headaches with no apparent cause, the number one factor is a word called stress. 
Stress. Stress is a word that we cannot avoid. It's all over the place. There are external stressors, things that happen outside of the body, and there are things that happen inside of the body that cause us stress. For external stressors, we're talking about being busy, doing ministry, taking care of children, going to work, paying bills, running a business, going to school. Even if you're retired, you're stressed. You are all subject to stress. We are all subject to stress. That's just the world we live in. Stress, if it is left unchecked, can cause chronic illness and can have a major toll on your mental and physical health. Let's talk a little bit about internal stressors, and this one is a little bit more difficult. So, remember I told you from the beginning that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God has created an item in our body called hormones. Hormones. Hormones are the body's chemical messengers. They play an important role in our daily functions. It is hormones that regulate our blood sugar. It is hormones that regulate our blood pressure, our growth, fertility, metabolism, how fast you burn off food, even your sleep. All of that is regulated from inside of your body. The influence of hormones even goes so far as to how you think. Thank you very much. As to how you think. Hormones, it, when they are at an even keel, are known to be balanced. But if it fluctuates just a little bit above or a little bit below, then you are said to be in a hormonal imbalance. And when the slightest fluctuation of a hormone occurs in your body, you can feel like your entire body is out of whack. So as women, there are some physical issues that cause our hormones to fluctuate. And I'm gonna talk about a few of them. The first one, which is a very important one, and is actually the main one that causes fluctuation of hormones in our body, is thyroid disorders. Thyroid, the thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped gland that is located right here in your throat, in the neck. And it secretes hormones that play a vital role in your metabolism, how quickly or how slowly you burn off food, growth and development. The thyroid gland regulates how deeply you can breathe, how fast you breathe. And also, it regulates your body weight and your um, your heartbeat, how fast or how slow your heartbeat. If you're finding you're having racing heartbeat, it could be your thyroid gland. That's one. The next one, I remember I said these are things that you're gonna, you have not heard about in church before. We're gonna talk about menopause, women. This is a normal thing that happens to all women but women are ashamed to talk about it. So I will talk about it for you tonight, okay? What is happening during this time is that you have hormones, three main ones, called estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. You don't have to write those down unless you want to. But these are now beginning to decline in your body as your body is now saying, Okay, I'm past childbearing years. I don't need to do that anymore so I can take down these hormones. This causes such a major disruption in the lives of women. And what happens is that the hormones are fluctuating so much. They're going up, 
they're going down. They're going up, they're going down. So much so that women report sometimes that they feel like they're losing their mind because it's so much. Perimenopause begins around age 36. So those women who are in 36, people think it happens in your 50s on, but the process starts around 36. The average is age 51 and on. So menopause is something that when women are going through, it's not miserable than miserable, but their hormones are fluctuating so much that they really don't know what to do. Pregnancy, that's the next one. People who are pregnant have uncontrollable crying sometimes, mood swings, cravings for certain types of food. They want to eat certain types of food. All of that is hormone driven. The people say, is your baby want it? It's you want it because of your hormones. Postpartum time, that's the time immediately after you have a baby. If you know someone, ladies, who has recently had a baby and the baby is a year and, or less, I want you to check on them because they are not always okay. During this time, the hormones are balancing after having so much during pregnancy. Now they're balancing. They have lack of sleep because they have a young baby to take care of and sometimes they don't have all the help they need and they feel overwhelmed with stress and these stabilizing hormones sometimes cause them not even to be able to get out of bed properly much to take care of themselves much less their babies it is a very crucial time take care of your young mothers ladies in the church call them Ask them, ask them how they are doing. Send them a text. Reach out to them. Bring them a meal. It is a very crucial time. We are a body of believers, a community. We have to rally around each other. The next one is adolescence. Puberty hormones affect teenagers, their mood, emotions, impulses. Mood swings, especially in young girls, are on the rise because they are preparing for childbearing years. So they have a surge or a rapid increase of estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. The most intense age time of development is ages 12 to 15. And during this time, growth hormones are on the rise. Be patient with them. Sometimes we say they're rude or they're feisty, or whatever we say. Maybe that's the case. But some of them are going through things so that they don't even understand about their own bodies. They don't know what to do with themselves. Take time with them. So those are just a few. The results of hormonal imbalances are slow heartbeat, depending if it's high or low. Slow heartbeat, rapid heartbeat. Unexplained weight loss, unexplained weight gain. Fatigue, frequent constipation, frequent bowel movements, high blood cholesterol, dry and coarse skin, numbness or tingling in the hands and feet. I don't want you to run out all tonight and say, I'm going to go make an appointment with my doctor tomorrow. I don't want you to do that. But what I want you to do is just to take the knowledge and know that when some of these things are happening in your body, you're not alone. You're not going crazy. These are natural things that occur in our body. And again, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We just need to bring these things to light because as our sister said, knowledge is power. So here's the bottom line. When people say just pray it away, we know that prayer can change things, of course. And I encourage every one of you to continue to pray. That is not bad advice. As a matter of fact, we're Christian women and Jesus himself said for us to come to him. 
And that is actually something we'll talk about a little bit later. But we just have to know that we are made of body, mind, and spirit. And even the Bible makes that distinction. Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, Do not be conformed to the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. God specific, specifically said, if we are going to be different from the world, our minds and the way that we think have to be different and have to be renewed. So when physical issues come about and they affect our moods and our thinking, how we think and ultimately how we act is what is going to make the difference for us. During times of stress and tension, we need to pray we need to give it to Jesus, but we also need to have practical solutions that we can draw upon that will help us change our viewpoint and help us reduce the stress and tension that we feel. So I'm going to talk a little bit about stress and tension. There are three stages to stress and tension. Number one is the alarm stage. During this stage, the central nervous system in the brain is awakened and it's causing the body to go into fight or flight mode. So if something happens, somebody came in here with a gun or whatever, you're going to go into fight and flight mode. You're going to run, right? That is the kind of thing that happens when in the alarm stage. During fight or flight, your brain releases a hormone call cortisol. This hormone weakens your immune system and decreases energy levels. The next stage is your resistance stage when your body begins to repair itself to normal heart rate, normal blood pressure, but it's still in that high alert. Now, let's just stop here for a minute. If somebody is constantly being bombarded with stress and tension, they're always going to be in the alarm state, and they're always going to be in the resistance stage. So think your body is always in the alarm stage. That is your blood pressure is raised, your heart rate is raised. Those are the things that work on your mental health. The exhaustion stage is activated when the first two stages come, and it causes a breakdown in the balance of the body. So over time, if you're always in the alarm stage, if you're always in the, exhaust, in the um, resistance stage, your body is going to become exhausted because it cannot keep being, dealing with that stress. This is the stage where disease occurs. So you see people who have heart disease, high blood pressure, stress, high blood sugar levels, um, problems with their kidneys, their liver, and other vital organs. So you see it's stress that causes, that works on your mental health through your body functions. So when you hear that stress is the killer, it is not the stress itself, it is our body's response, how we respond to stress. Stress is going to come. We cannot have a world where we don't have stress. It's just, it doesn't exist. But we have to know how to deal with it. When we deal with stress in a positive way, we are looking at boosting the body's feel-good hormones. The feel-good hormones in the body are called dopamine, serotonin, endorphins, and oxytocin. Those are the feel-good hormones that we have. So let me tell you a little bit about oxytocin because that's my favorite one. Before you leave here tonight, I want you guys to boost your oxytocin. And how you do that is by giving somebody a hug. That's the number one thing that you can do. So when our sister said today about smile a while and greet somebody, 
She was boosting your oxytocin. Did you notice at first you might have felt a little tired? And as soon as somebody touched you and you touch them, you start to smile, you start to sing, everybody's happy. Oxytocin was boosted during that time. Sister Rode and I said, I, I couldn't have done better this evening. Thank you. <laughs> so, feel good hormones. So what are the practical solutions to dealing with stress? Number one, here's the number one one that we need to do. Ladies, listen to me on this one. You need to learn to say no. No. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Learn to say no. Learn to prioritize yourself and do not overextend yourself. My father would say, don't take up too much and put too much on your head. Learn to say no. When we are, as women, are busy, by nature we're busy, we're industrious, we want to do a lot of things, we go here, we go there, and we do not stop and take time for ourselves. We have responsibilities, children, work, but we don't take care of ourselves. And let me tell you something, ladies. If you don't take care of yourself, nobody else will. Because nobody knows what you need as much as you know what you need. We don't have to be in everything. If you are a person who is prone to stress and tension and anxiety, sometimes it's okay to say no. You cannot be everything to everybody. Now, I am not saying to not do the things of the Lord. Church work, church business is important, and it has to go on. But you need to seek the Lord, include him in your plans, your planning, God cares about every single aspect of your life. We need to seek him and trust him on what is important for us to be involved in and what is not. The next one is diet and exercise. This is another practical solution for dealing with stress. Diet and exercise. Now, this one is a hard one for me because we all love our food. And I have to say that the food in Jamaica is the best food in the world. As soon as I came off the plane, I said, I want jerk pork, I want some roast yam, I want this, I want that. And my family gave it to me. So I can't say that I'm preaching to you on this one, I'm preaching to myself. We can enjoy our food, but we have to do so in moderation. Watch your sugar intake. Watch processed foods intake. Processed foods are those foods that you don't pull it out of the ground and it's like that. Flour is something you don't just pull out the ground, right? You have to process it. Same with sugar. Soft drinks. Those things cause inflammation in our bodies and contribute to the internal stressors of our bodies. We need to make sure we're eating whole foods, organic foods. They're necessary to help build our immune systems, give us the energy we need to cope with stress and imbalances in the body. And also, they have other benefits as well for diabetes, high blood pressure, and all of that, your diet. Research shows that foods such as fruits and vegetables and healthy fats, such as fish, avocado, you say pear, bananas, watermelon, pumpkin, oranges, chicken, whole grains, peas. They help raise cortisol levels in the body that spike during stressful times. Things like pork, and I know the pork is sweet because I had some when I came last week and it was good. But things like pork, too much of it causes inflammation in our body and these things cause stress. So, make sure that we are eating right. Whole grains, peas, those are the type of thing we need to eat. Along with eating right, we have to ensure that we are taking in enough water. It's estimated that 80% of persons do not drink enough water. 
We need it to keep our blood flowing. We need it to keep our joints moving. And we need it for proper brain function. Adult women need 2.7 liters of fluid per day, especially how this is a hot climate. Men, there's some men in the back, so this one's for you. You need 3.7 liters of fluid each day. And preferably it's water or some drink that does not include sugar. So how do you know you're getting enough water? You can tell a very easy way by how your urine looks. So if your urine is dark, or if it's amber color, it means your kidneys are working hard and they're working in overtime, they need some help, and they need water. The urine is light yellow or clear, you're good. Drink enough water. Exercise. Exercise releases endorphins, one of our feel-good hormones. And it said just 15 minutes of intense exercise, such as running, or an hour of moderate exercise or low intensity exercise, such as walking or even doing housework, can prevent anxiety and depression and strengthen your heart and your cardiovascular system. So ladies, for those of you who may be older and you have problems, maybe bending your knees or whatever, and you can't walk far, you can still move. Get a chair and just sit there and march in that chair. Move your arms. Even that will have benefits for you. And you will see that you feel better, your mental health is better, your mind is clearer, and guess what, you'll sleep better. Deep breathing and stretching. I'm gonna ask us all really quick to stand, just for a minute. If you're online, ask you to stand too, wherever you are. When you are beginning to feel stress and overwhelmed, take a minute, close your eyes, and I want you to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. One more time, in through the nose, hold it, and out through the mouth. Now I want you to roll back your shoulders. I want you to roll your neck if you can. Take a second for you, you can be seated. Do you know what you just did right now? You reset your mind You've lowered your blood pressure just a little bit. You've lowered your blood sugar just a little bit. And it's helped you to relax. Just that little thing. The act of bringing in air to your lungs strengthens your lungs. So the next time you're at work and your boss or your coworker get you upset, before you answer them, just breathe in and breathe out before you respond. Amen, ladies? All right, sleep is the next one. I can't stress this one enough. Because adult women do not get enough sleep. We need, here's the number now, and it's not lazy or lazy, it's what your body needs to properly function. Six to eight hours every night. How many people in here get six to eight hours every, all right, Sister T, amen, very good. The ma vast majority of people do not get eight to ten, six to eight hours of sleep each night, but you need it for proper brain function. I come from a family where we like to sit up late at night and talk. <laughs> we don't get enough sleep all the time, but it's important. Teenagers ages 13 to 18 need eight to 10 hours of sleep. And children six to 13 need nine to 12 hours of sleep a night. When you lack sleep, it lowers your immune system and your body defenses. In adults, it causes weight gain, high blood pressure, heart disease, and depression. Children who do not get enough sleep have learning problems. 
They have problems with memory and even behavioral problems. Again, sometimes when you see children and you say they're rude, it's not rude, they're rude. They're not getting enough sleep. They have to get enough sleep, and they need proper sleep. Amen? The next thing is to practice an attitude of gratitude. Psalm 22 tells us that God inhabits the praises of his people. When we praise God, even when we don't feel like it, even when the situation seems difficult, even when something has cut us to the very core, we need to say, praise God, hallelujah, anyhow. We worship God for who he is and not for what he can do for us, right? But when we worship him, the very act of worship has positive effects on your body and positive effects on your mind. The last one is that we need to stand on God's word. What does the word of God really say? I've brought a lot of science in tonight, but what does the word of God really say about stress, tension, and anxiety? We have to know our words, our word. Remember, God is concerned with every single aspect of your life, and it is not his will for us to be sick, be anxious, and depressed. The devil uses the time of stress when our bodies are down, our defenses are down to attack and to throw us off course. Jesus tells us in John 10.10 10, that the thief comes not but to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But the thing about it is Jesus didn't stop there. He said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. What a great God. So he knew that we were going to be going through struggles, but he said he came so that we can have abundant life. And an abundant life is not stress. It is not anxiety. It is not living in depression. An abundant life for Jesus is winning souls to him. It's victory in Jesus. We are winners in the kingdom. Don't let the devil knock you off course. John 16, again, words of Jesus says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. How can you be anxious and depressed and have bad mental health when you have peace in Jesus? In the world, you are going to have problems. But again, Jesus doesn't leave it there. What a great God. He says, be of good cheer. Take heart because I have overcome the world. I've overcome depression. I've overcome anxiety. I've overcome stress. I have overcome the world. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and thanksgiving, make your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which you know your word, ladies, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, read it out. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. Why did Paul write such a thing to the church in Philippi? When he wrote that, he was imprisoned for preaching the gospel, all right? Why would he write such a thing? Why would he tell you to think about things that are lovely and pure and wonderful and all those things when you're sitting in a prison cell? Because Paul fixed his eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of his faith, and he's the author and finisher of yours and mine. That is a good example 
a good example about when the cares come down on you like an overwhelming flood. Even when our bodies fail us, we need to make up our minds to think on lovely and pure things. Why? Because when we think on lovely and pure things, guess what? Those feel-good hormones that we talk are boosted. Paul didn't say that, but it's true. They're boosted. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Every aspect of your life. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, Jesus says, Come to me. All you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Hallelujah, what a great God. If we really look into this verse, what is Jesus telling us? He is telling us that he's pulling for us. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Not only is Jesus going to show up for us, but he is also going to share life's load with us. He's going to pull with us. Even if we get tired and fatigued, he's pulling with us. Even if we get weary, he's pulling for us. Even when we get stressed and our hormones are raging and we don't know what's going on in our very body, Jesus is pulling for us. He's pulling for us and he's working on our behalf. We just need to come to him and take the first step and he's promised us that he will show up Every single time. Not once has he ever been unfaithful to us. Not once has he ever let us down. He promised that he will always be there for us. So ladies, remember, you are not alone. We are humans. We are in the world. And we are going to experience things just like any other woman. But we have to remember that Jesus is pulling for us. He's on our side. And I hope that you walk away today and the next time you feel any kind of stress or tension, make sure you look at your papers and remember the practical solutions that you can use. But don't leave out Jesus because that is the answer to it all. Amen? Amen? The last thing I'm going to do before we leave, on your papers you'll see some, um, something. It says, what is something that is causing you stress? What is something that you feel anxious about? It could be anything at all. Whatever you are feeling anxious about tonight, it could be you have an unsaved loved one that you're very concerned about. It could be a financial situation that you're concerned about. Maybe you're not well in your body. Maybe you're about to embark on a journey and you don't know what's happening. Maybe things are uncertain on your job. What is something that you are concerned about? I want you to write it on the paper. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to write it on a paper. And during that time, Sister Atkinson, I'm going to call you up, please, if you can come up, please. And we are going, she's going to give us a closing prayer. Do you have your thing? Oh, we'll do the questions after the prayer, after she's finished with the prayer. We'll do the question and answering. All right, if you, I want you to now take that piece of paper that you've written your concerns on, and I want you to hold them up. Sister Atkinson is going to pray over them this evening because there are practical solutions that we use, but we don't want to leave out the Lord tonight. Everything 
needs to go to the Lord. Sister Atkinson. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We worship you. We exalt you. We bless your name. We thank you for being our intentional God. Lord, you knew this moment would come when we would put these anxieties before you. These things that have held us captives in our minds, in our souls, and even arrested our spirits. And now in the name of Jesus, we give them to you. We present them to you. Lord, your word declare that your burden is light. Your yoke is easy. Mighty God, and we will not carry them any further. Today we lay them down. We lay them down and we say no more. You shall not harass us. We shall have no more sleepless nights. We shall not lose our peace in the name of Jesus. We cast them on you for your word declare that we cast all our burdens upon you. We refuse to carry them in the name of Jesus. We receive your peace. We take it on now. In a world of turmoil, you said there will be trouble, but we, we will have peace in you. Lord, we have chosen you and you have chosen us even before we were ever created. And so in the name of Jesus, again tonight, we refuse for our souls to be tormented. We refuse for the enemy of our soul to take us down and out and confused and distorted and distracted. In the name of Jesus, we receive joy. We are taking back our joy. We are taking back our worship tonight. As the word has been released, practical examples and practical techniques. Lord God, we apply them, Lord. We will not be, hallelujah, we will not allow this night to pass without saying, God, you are more than enough. And we refuse to lose any more sleep tonight. We cast fear, anxiety, depression, doubt, oppression, and everything that has weighted us down. We refuse to be stagnant in our families. We refuse, mighty God, for the enemy to torment our homes anymore. Where we are not able, mighty God, to be the ones who stand up for righteousness. Hallelujah. We will pray, mighty God. Our prayers are returning. The altars are building up again as we take our authority and our place in Christ. In Jesus' name, you declare that everything is under our feet. And now in Jesus' name, we walk according to your word as the blessed, as the more than conquerors, as the victors. In Jesus' name, no more. We cancel every assignment of hell from over our lives. Every home that is represented here and online tonight, the harassment cease in Jesus' name name. Today we take territory. Today we trample on every plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. We are released, mighty God. We think upon the things that are lovely, that are pure, that are praiseworthy, that are of a good report. You say, think upon these things. You are more than enough, therefore we are more than enough. We are the more than conquerors tonight. Hallelujah. Women of God, just begin to worship. Just begin to thank him. Just begin to praise him. Just begin to release your words. Just begin to declare in the atmosphere, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who give me strength. I will not be bound. When Jesus touches, a one touch is a complete touch. He touched you already. It is done. Do not allow fear to distract you. Do not allow hopelessness to keep you bound. Release your words. Release them by faith. Release them and know that you are called to stand in such a time like this. In the name of Jesus, mighty God, show us what doctors to go to, what nutritionists to go to. Mighty God, how to exercise. You said if we lack wisdom, we must ask. We asked you tonight. We did not understand. But now the word has been released. And we receive wisdom. Thank you mighty God. We honor you and we glorify you. And declare that indeed we are going forward in God. As we understand. Now we understand mighty God. Now we know and we bless you and praise you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord another hand clap. Amen. Praise God, praise God. 
So before I could sit down and take my seat, I just wanted to know if there was anybody who had any question tonight about anything that we discussed. Okay. I hear we have an online question. Hallelujah. All right, the online question, Shanika, comes from Shanika. She's asking, is it plausible that sighing, sighing, like when you sigh, sighing. Uh -huh. mm -hmm, that sighing may actually be our body's automatic way of getting that breath intake in? Is it plausible? I guess it's plausible. But the act of getting air into your lung is an intentional act that you need to do. And it's breathing in deeply, filling your lungs, and breathing out deeply. That is the act that you want to do because that is what helps, remember, lower the blood pressure, lower the blood sugar, uh, sugar as well, lower um, the feelings of stress and anxiety, and also filling your lungs with oxygen that is, goes to your blood and to your brain so that you can think more clearly. Any other question? Don't be shy, now is the time to ask, or you can ask me afterwards if you don't wanna ask in the big crowd as well, that's okay too. Yes. Good evening to everyone. Good evening. Yes, my question is uh, this. How long does the menopause last for? Wow, that's a good question. Every woman is different. So the time that it starts, it could start in the 36th region, I said. It can start around the 50s region. It just depends. And it all depends really on blood work. You can't really tell when menopause really starts and ends, um, except through certain blood tests. But usually it's a period, it can be a period of years, five years that women are going through that or more. Again though, it just depends on each person. Each person is different. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. So there's no set time that that happens. But that's a very good question. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, hearing none, do I turn back over to the moderator or? Okay. Oh yes, we have a question here. Okay, so the question was, she asked two questions. Number one, is there a cure for menopause? The answer for that is no. Everybody has to go through it. But is there a medication that you can take? That's a different question. The diff now, that's, that's getting into, that's a very loaded question because there are things that you can do like hormone replacement therapy, which I do not recommend for a lot of different reasons. There are teas that you can drink. They, I know that, um, I remember hearing my mom talk about certain bush teas that you can drink for it. Um, you, some of you ladies would know that better than I would know that. There are supplements that you can take. So things like vitamin C, um, again, you'll find that in oranges and those type of things that you eat. You want vitamin B12 is something that you need. Vitamin B12 can found in, be found in your whole grains, those type of things. Um, if you eat a balanced diet, you should be able to go through it. Now, some women have hot flashes very bad, and they have to take certain things for that. Those things I would recommend that you discuss them with your doctor. Do not take anything. Let me tell you, say that again. Do not take anything over the counter just to say somebody told me I must take this, so I'm going to take it. 
consult with your doctor to make sure you're taking the right thing and make sure that it's not an underlying condition that's causing the problem. But there are not a lot of things that you can take. It's a natural process and you just have to go through it. You're welcome. Yes. Good night. Well, I can't hear you. Can you come to the mic, please? <laughs> Good night, everyone. Yes. I'm saying to you, you said every woman mm -hmm. go to menopause. Mm -hmm. I am 6 to 1 October. I have no idea about menopause. Okay. I don't go through anything. Nothing. I don't feel anything at no time. Well, you need to put up your two hands and thank God. <laughs> For those online, the lady said that she is of a certain age and she does not feel like she has gone through anything with menopause. Not everybody must go through, you have to go through it. Not everybody is going to feel the same symptoms. That's the thing. Everybody is going to go through menopause. And by the way, let, let me tell you that you look good for your age. She told us her age, you look good. <laughs> not everybody's going to feel the same symptoms. So you may not feel the same things that other women feel. Some people go through it and have very bad symptoms. Some people don't go through it and don't have any. It just depends. And some people go through it earlier. That's right. That's right. Amen. From our online worshiper, Aldith said, you were, ta you were talking about hormones. Can a 60-year-old woman be pregnant? Can a 60-year-old woman what? Okay, pregnant. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> the answer to that is yes. And the reason why the answer to that is yes is as, as long as she has certain body functions, I'm not God. And God is the one who determines life, correct? So as long as she has certain level of hormones that are present in her body, yes, you can. You can. Any other question? Come to the mic, come to the mic. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. All right, so I have two questions, I think. How long does it take for you to not experience chemical imbalance in your body? How long does it take for you not to, not ex to experience? You mean once you start to take? Once you start to like, uh, so the other question would be, is it menopause or not? If you're not 36 and you experience the anxiety, the depression, the, no. the fact that you feel like you're losing your mind, as you said, uh, the fatigue, the no. racing of the heart and everything. Remember, menopause is something that you really can't know until you check certain levels that you have, certain hormone levels, okay? All women, because of the estrogen, progesterone, and the testosterone that is fluctuating, going up and going down, is, and that is what causes some of the anxiety that you feel. That does not mean that you're going through menopause at that time. Menopause is a different disorder, or a different issue, I should say. Um, it's not a disorder, it's something natural that we all go through, or all gonna go through. So. Just because you're feeling anxiety and depression or whatever does not mean that you're going through menopause. It means that you have fluctuating hormones. And how do you get rid of it? So remember the practical solution. So depending on what it is, if it's a thyroid disorder that's causing it, there is medication for that. Or it can be that you need to change your diet or some of those practical solutions, sleep, exercise, diet, those are the type of things that you use. You're welcome. This lady back here. 
night, everyone. Good night. Um, doctor gave me some um, cholesterol tablet. I am taking them. And somebody tell me that yesterday, yesterday that cholesterol tablet is not good for the heart. Your cholesterol tablet is not good for the heart? Somebody was telling me that yesterday. Okay, so to answer that, I have to be very careful as a nurse because I don't know your health history. So I cannot say if it is or if it's not, but I would say to speak to your doctor. Tell your doctor your concerns. If you're having issues with your heart, talk to your doctor. I don't know your entire history. I've never examined you, so I don't know. But your doctor will know, okay? okay? So make sure if you feel like that's something, a lot of medications do have side effects. Let your doctor explain to you what the side effects of the medications that you are on are taking. And also, ladies, let me just say this, this um, Sister Washington. Sister Washington brings up a very, very good point about medication. Make sure if you're taking medication, you know what you're taking and you know what interact with what. Because sometimes those medications interact with each other and cause problems in your body and you don't even know. Make sure you talk to your doctor, write down your medication, know what you're taking so that you can know that nothing is interacting with each other and they're the things that you need to take. Thank you for that question, sister. I'll take one or two more questions. Good evening. Good evening. Um, what I would like to find out, um, study have shown, our data have shown, said that for you to know if you're in menopause, you have to have one year clear of having your menstrual cycle. Yes. But what if every three months you have a cycle and it stops, mm -hmm. and maybe two times for the year, what is that? That's, that's perimenopause. Really? Okay. So the question that she asked was, <laughs> the doctors say that the definition of menopause is one year without having a menstrual cycle. That's true, very correct. And she says, what happens if it's three months here, three months there? That's your body starting to prepare for menopause. So as it, the definition is one year, that means you are in perimenopause, which is the time around or before menopause. Okay, thank you. Yes. One last question. Anybody have a burning question or a question from online? One last one. Our, okay, we have an online question. It was asking, um, how do you know, this is from Ginger. How does one know that menopause is finished when it's over? Okay, so remember, we just talked about um, the year. So the year, two ways to know. Number one is blood test, and a blood test can tell you and the second way of knowing is a year, one full year without having a menstrual cycle at that age is what defines that you are now postmenopausal. Okay? All right, ladies. I'll be around this evening and around if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time, your attention and your questions. May God bless and keep each and every one of you. Amen. Chair, Chair her again, Chair Dr. Small. I think we have had a wonderful evening. I hope you got all that you can and you can all that you got. Huh? All right. And then we, we, with all that was said and done, we can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we are going to cheer her again, cheer Dr. Small, and we appreciate the presentation so much. But I'm going to call on Deaconess Byfield to come, <laughs> to come and, and 
do the vote of thanks. Just if I know one name, give. Put your hands above your heads and give the Lord a great clap offering. Praise the Lord. And put your hands before you and give Dr. Donna Small a clap of appreciation. We are, you know, this church is very blessed. Very, very blessed. This is Mental Health Workshop in our women's ministry. Our president has much to write about this month in her report. And you know, it didn't stop there. It says mental health workshop, a biblical approach to dealing with stress, tension, and anxiety. And what stood out to me is that I'm not alone in this thing. All of us have some stress, all of us have some anxieties, and so this evening we have been taught how to approach these issues when they happen. And so we're just so grateful to you, Dr. Donna Small. We want to say to you that your, your presentation, I give you the highest compliment. That is S-F-E. That is smooth, fluent, and elegant. Thank you so very much. You know that you had the people in an immersed flow state. Nobody left. Everybody was at the edge of their chair, just eating out of your hands. We are just so grateful for you, to you, to God be the glory. And we hope this is not the last time. God bless you and thank you so very much. Thank you, Sister Byfield, and we know that goes for the online worshippers too. At this time, I'm going to ask Sister Reed Morris to come and to specially say thank you. Dr. Small, we are asking you to step forward. Good evening, ladies. Did I see some? I thought they had said some men were here. Dr. Small, it is my pleasure on behalf of the women of the Montego Bay New Testament Church of God to present you this small token of appreciation for taking time out. I don't know whether it's a vacation you're on or you just came, but to take time out to come and present to us this evening. I know from what... Um, Nurse Byfield said, we have learned a lot. You have given us much food for thought. And we just ask that you accept this and that we pray that God will continue to bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Reed Morris. And as ladies, as we come together, this is where we learn. So when we come, we just sit and watch because you will be called upon at some time or the other. So we are here to learn and to do our part when we are called upon. Please learn and don't say, I can't. Hello, ladies. Everybody, this is where we learn everything to practice up there. All right, at this time, I'm, I see some people collecting offering. You can... All right, we are going to stand at this time, and we are going to close off. And then you can finish what you are doing. Please stand for me, everybody. We are just going to sing to God be the glory, and then we, we are dismissed. Be the glory, great things he has done. So love the world that he gave us his son to him. Let us life and atonement Praise the Lord, let the earth.
to the Father, to Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Praise the Lord. Please hug three persons, at least three persons, before you go. God bless you. Safe journey home.